This is 99% Invisible. I'm Roman Mars. A few months before the end of the world, Paul Monaco posted this message on YouTube. Hello, everyone. Paul Monaco here. Buddha Paul, as most of you know me as. Um, you probably all heard the news. Yay land, the Sims Online closing down. The world that was ending was called The Sims Online. It was an online version of one of the most popular computer games ever made. You've all been wonderful. You've helped me through a hard time in my life when I first got online. But ironically, the online version of The Sims was not very popular. They ended up losing tons of subscribers and changing the name to EA Land. And then they finally pulled the plug. Thank you. And uh, please, let's, let's try to stay in touch. And if not, um... Good luck with with, um, whatever you choose to do and move on to. As you can probably hear, EA Land was not a normal video game. There were no monsters, no killing, and although it had some competitive elements, for many players, competition wasn't the point at all. Unlike a lot of other games where you might be shooting people or slaying dragons or something. This was a game about socializing. That's Robert Ashley. I'm Robert Ashley. He produces a very popular and fantastic internet radio show that's been on a very long hiatus. I'm the creator of A Life Well Wasted. A Life Well Wasted. It's about video games and the people who love them. And EA Land was a video game that a dedicated few absolutely loved. The crowd that it attracted, I think, were people who just wanted to get together and sort of chat, meet strangers. It was a nice place. Over time, it became a kind of intimate, almost bar, like the cheers of video games. Where everyone knows your name. And at the moment that Paul Monaco, a.k.a. Buddha Paul, found EA Land, it was exactly what he needed most. My wife... um had a, a long-term illness she, um, from a blood transfusion. She had hepatitis C. And the last three years or so of her life were pretty, you know, pretty much a challenge for, well, for both of us. And after she passed away, I, I had absolutely no function other than to wake up, go to work, and, and go to sleep again. With, with her illness, I didn't get out and socialize much. We, you know, we weren't able to you know, go out to the bars and meet up with friends and have dinner. I totally desocialized myself. And this game was kind of a way for me to just kind of get back into into living again. Uh, it was it was pretty amazing. And Paul began to live for EA Land. He would play it for hours and hours. It was the first thing he did when he got home from work. You're treated to a big warm greeting. Everyone would, uh, you know, say hi. And, you'd, you know, your, your IMs would be beeping along and uh, you'd be inundated with that. Uh, it, it made you feel really good. It wasn't the real world, but his friends were real friends. And virtual worlds do have an upside. Your race, your color, your religion, all that can be totally masked and you're truly judged on who you really are and how you present yourself. There's no no prejudice, there's no preconceived anything. It's just, you're really taking at face value. People could really like break loose and, and be themselves and have some fun. It just feels really good. But Paul's utopia didn't last because EA Land started hemorrhaging money. The writing was on the wall, the server was about to go dark, and this event, this virtual apocalypse, might only exist in the memory of the players if it weren't for Dr. Henry Lowood. I had just stumbled across um, this project by Henry Lowood. Uh, my name is Henry Lowood. Who is this? archival researcher at Stanford. And I had a project called How They Got Game, which is on the history of digital games and simulations. Saving video games for future generations. You know, 50, 100, 200 years from now. How are we going to save that history? You know, like, we've got to save the video games. So Dr. Lowood and his colleagues preserve what happens inside video games. Now, for a single-player game like Pac-Man, for example, this is easy. You effectively take out the Atari cartridge and put it on the shelf. But saving multiplayer online games is not so simple. Saving the software alone is kind of a barren exercise. If you save the code for EA Land and turn it on 100 years from now, you'd enter a world and nothing would be there. All the things that Paul Monaco and his friends love would be impossible to find. You need to document what people are doing in these spaces. 
that situation is much more like what a historian or an archivist would do when faced with the problem of documenting the real world. So when Dr. Lowood caught wind of EA land shutting down, he had the opportunity to record something a historian or archaeologist would die to witness firsthand in the real world. To see what it would be like when an online world came to an end. What happens when a virtual world closes? The end of a culture. What is it like to be there in the last minute and when it shuts down? So the tape is rolling and the last few hours of EA Land are being recorded and the most dedicated diehard users are there exchanging virtual hugs and reminiscing. The players are typing messages that appear like comic book word bubbles. You hear all these avatars crying. And you also hear all the coos and moans in the gibberish language of the game known as Simlish. And you know, they, they sound like they're going to be bummed and, uh, and everything, but it's not like a big pity party. But then toward the, the end of, of the night, there's this radio station that you could listen to in the game called Charmed Radio. And they had this DJ there uh, named Spike. He is sort of the only voice that you end up hearing at the end of the world. And as soon as he starts talking, you understand what is being lost. Hey guys, the last time you're going to hear me speak, well, the last time before TSI goes down. I just want to thank you all. Um, it's been an amazing experience, it really has. And I t- promise I wouldn't make myself cry, but I can't, I can't stress enough how much you guys have meant to me over the past however many years it's been. It really has been awesome. And uh, some people don't get attached to things, but uh, when, you make, when you make friends, all the people have in this game. <laughs> it's actually really hard. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to play the last song. It's Sarah Brightman and Andrea Bocelli. Time to say goodbye. <laughs> Hopefully you guys will uh, keep in touch. My Yahoo ID is one two three four five. 12345 Good luck in life, everybody, and, uh, best wishes. I love you all and uh, it's been great knowing you. Take care guys and uh, let's just, I just want to, even if you haven't got a drink, just propose a toast to Parazad who's been absolutely amazing. Parazad, we couldn't have done this without you. Thank you. You get this feeling like being on the deck of the Titanic. Yeah, anyone who actually stayed to the end was very much invested in the game on an emotional level. When they pulled the plug on the server, bits and pieces of the world started disappearing. The environment began to disintegrate. The texture on the trees flickered, and all the people froze and blinked out of existence. The actual ending was, was uh, you know, not with a bang, but with a whimper. And the last thing that they saw was basically just an error message, a server disconnect message. And then, the world ended. Ninety Nine Percent Invisible is Sam Greenspan, Katie Mingle, Avery Truffleman, and me, Roman Mars. We are a project of ninety-one point seven KALW San Francisco and produced out of the offices of ArcSign, an architecture and interiors firm in beautiful downtown Oakland, California. I produced this story a long time ago for a radio show called Snap Judgment, also from Oakland, California. I was their first senior producer many, many years ago. And of all the people and places I worked for in radio, it is the credit for which I am most proud. Subscribe to Snap Judgment today, and you'll be glad you did. You can find the show and like the show on Facebook. We're all on Twitter and Instagram, Tumblr, and Spotify, but I encourage you to explore the entire world of 99% Invisible at 99pi.org. Radiotopia.